Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm a board certified dermatologist and acne expert, and I'm excited to share with you today the results of the SAFA trial, the largest ever study of spironolactone for acne. Now, what is spironolactone? It's an old blood pressure medicine, but it happens to have anti-androgen effects. And this can be really useful in acne because hormones fundamentally drive all acne. Those androgens turn on the oil gland that makes that oil that clogs up the pores and is food for acne bacteria. So spironolactone conceptually is a treatment that has a lot of promise for acne. However, we are really lacking data about how well it works. The general clinical experience was that it was a useful treatment, especially for adult women with acne, but we really were lacking clinical trial data on how does it compare to something like an antibiotic or to placebo, and what's the relative safety of it? What are the key side effects? Well, now we have this data. The SAFA trial is a 400 patient trial conducted in the United Kingdom. It was done with a pragmatic intent, trying to mimic real world practice to be relevant to patients with acne. In this study, patients were randomized to receive either spironolactone or a placebo. Those who received spironolactone, they started on 50 milligrams a day for the first six weeks, and if they were doing well, they went up to 100 milligrams a day after that. Notably, 98% of people were able to go from that 50 milligram dose to the higher 100 milligram dose, and throughout the trial, over 95% of people were able to stay on that dose. So that really suggests that spironolactone 100 milligrams a day can be well tolerated, and we know that that dose works a little better than 50 milligrams a day, so that probably is the ideal starting dose for most patients. In this study, they found that spironolactone worked significantly better than placebo. They looked at 12 weeks and 24 weeks, and at both of those time points, whether they looked at patient-reported outcomes of how, how they felt their acne was doing, or investigator, the study clinician's outcomes about how the study investigators thought the acne was doing, both of those showed that spironolactone was significantly better than placebo in treating acne. They did find at 24 weeks, it looked like the outcomes were a little better than 12 weeks, and I think that fits with our clinical experience that spironolactone is a bit of a slower medicine. It takes patience. It can really take three to five months to get to the maximum benefits of spironolactone. So I think that validates our clinical experience there. This study was also really valuable when it comes to side effects. We really didn't have a lot of data. In this study, what they found when they looked at side effects was that spironolactone was really well tolerated. We'd often had concerns that spironolactone could cause irregular menstrual periods. But in this study, actually, there really wasn't any difference between placebo and spironolactone. In addition, we know that spironolactone can have some weak blood pressure effects, and so that can cause lightheadedness. And they did see that the patients who were randomized to spironolactone were 7% more likely to have dizziness or lightheadedness than those who got placebo. Still, 80% of people didn't have any issues when it comes to that side effect. And that's something that often can be managed by lowering the dose or just making sure that you're drinking enough water. The next important side effect that they noticed in the study was headache. There's about 8% more headache in those who are randomized to spironolactone than those who are treated with placebo. Again, the vast majority of people did not have this problem, but this is a helpful side effect to know about. So overall, this trial really adds to our knowledge about spironolactone. It's exciting to have this information to help our patients know what to expect. We think this is a valuable treatment for us, especially because we know oral antibiotics are the most common treatment used for women with acne, and spironolactone could represent an alternative on that that allows us to reduce our over-reliance of oral antibiotics, prevent antibiotic resistance, and other antibiotic-associated complications. In the future, though, we do need studies to compare spironolactone head-to-head -to, -head to oral antibiotics. There's some observational data that suggests that they may be similar in effectiveness, but we need more trials to really help us get to the bottom of that important question. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, give it a like. Check out our channel for more content and tell us know in the comments what you think about spironolactone and the treatment of acne. And don't forget to ask me about acne 